<laughs> under arrest. Stop. Ever wondered what happens when evil teens face off with the law? I just want to know who it is. Hey, 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 do it! Get ready for a wild ride. We're gonna spill the beans on five such cases where things went crazy when these rebellious teens found themselves in hot water and realized they had been arrested. In the quiet streets of Deltona, Florida, a police officer got a call about a burglary on July 18, 2022. However, an officer unintentionally stopped one street over from the correct address. Now, picture this. The officer's trying to talk to the 18-year-old driver, Leanna Rollins. But things quickly go from calm to crazy, making us wonder how it all got so intense. As the body camera starts rolling, we see the situation getting more and more dramatic. Hey, stop the car. Stop! Did you stay here? No. What are you doing here? Turn the car off. Turn the car off now. Turn the car off now. Turn the car off. Turn the car off now. The sergeant approaches the car, and Liana, misunderstanding the situation, reacts explosively. He instructed her to stop the car, but when she refused, things got serious. The sergeant, caught off guard, attempts to defuse the tension, but Liana's defiance grows. The officer was then seen asking her to turn off the car, but she still resists. She's like, why should I? What did I do? Both the officer and Liana seemed off, but the officer tried building the rapport, but Liana, being resilient, didn't listen to him. This encounter instantly becomes chaotic, and now we're left wondering how it got so intense. Don't ever forget that I'll put the second unit. Hey, me explain, let me, no, let no, me, let me explain to you don't what you we're ever doing. Put your hands on me, and I, I don't am say responding. Nothing. I don't give I'm responding to an alarm call. Put your hands on me, and I did turn up on you. Turn around. Watch your no. Nobody's I under arrest. Stop Stop. Stop. Turn the turn around, ma'am. Turn around. Stop you're not under. Me. You're not under I don't arrest. Care. You can't hostile. Don't you ever put your hands on me. I'll spit on you. Stop. You're not you're under not arrest. Stop. 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 Stop.
my heart and I will spit on you. Fix my wrist. What the? This hit me home. What are you doing? Stop touching me. Stop pulling Stop away. Stop touching me. My wrist hurts. I'm gonna pull away. What the? Told me fix my up. I will if you would just a second, okay? Fix my cuff. Turn around. I asked way too many. What are you guys doing? No, what the f are you doing? I'm gonna do your job. Stop pressing on me. I'm not pissing. 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 I'm not if you calm you. down, we'll help you out, okay? I'm just, I don't know, we're gonna get it out. So just go back inside, please. Well, city leaders, upon reviewing the footage circulating on social media, have contacted the sheriff, expressing their unease and dubbing the arrest an overreaction. This controversial incident caught on body cam is sending shockwaves through the community. But as we can see in the recording, the sergeant is observed attempting to speak with Liana when things quickly get out of control. Upon this, the deputy said even though he's in the wrong location, he believes he's in the right location. He's trying to establish a rapport. She wants to drive away. He reaches in to turn the car off to prevent a pursuit or anything happening to anybody. She just unloads on him with profanity. Well, at the end, Liana was arrested for battery on a law enforcement officer, and an investigation is still continuing. Just like what happened with Liana, there's another story about some evil teenagers who tried running away from the police. This time, it was at Garrett Morgan High School in Cleveland. Everything seemed normal until a group of teens with guns and masks showed up, turning the day into something you'd see in an action movie. However, what happened next could have been a tragedy if not for the quick act of Cleveland police. Police body camera footage reveals Ohio police chasing and arresting these three evil high schoolers. Hey, hold on. We have eyes on the metal, they just went to school. It's a fucking giant. The police died? Hey guys, come on here. All for you. Come on. Yeah, uh, detain them. What? You're, you're being detained. What? Detain them. What am I getting detained for? Don't. Turn around. Turn around. Don't. Turn around. Don't. Turn around. Don't. As soon as these teens realized they had been detained, they attempted to run from the scene, thinking it was their only option. They led officers on a foot chase after allegedly fleeing when confronted at the school. Little did they know, the police are experienced in pursuing suspects and arresting them. Ray, Ray, stop, 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 stop! Don't reach for it. Right? 
It wasn't long before the police finally caught up with the teens. One suspect was found with a gun, while two others were cornered in a backyard. You got cuffs? Hey, Bertie, I'm good. Sure way, West 2-5. Okay, I got it. Come on, we'll get it. Come on. We'll get it. You were detained behind for you? Stowe, go get the car! Got it going on the radio. Stowe, get the car, man! On the short way. On the short way. Thank you. One. Where'd the other two go into school? What's the description of those guys? I dropped my cuffs somewhere along. I did too. Is it good? Can we put him in your car until uh, Stoke gets here? Come on. Hey, Rick, I'm gonna grab the gun. Everybody read your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to attorney if you cannot afford one. You will be provided. You understand? Right. Even in such a rush situation, cops quickly told the arrested teen about his rights with the Miranda warning. Knowing these rights is crucial for protection during questioning or arrest, ensuring a fair legal process. Usually, it's a way to safeguard oneself in the midst of a hectic and potentially challenging situation. East of 4708 Clinton. To the time Why are you guys running then? If there's nothing to run for, why are you running? Right? What do you got on you? Get up, man. Where are your boys at? Tell me. Why are you running? Because you're always grabbing me. What the hell? Mm -hmm. You ran before we got to you, man. It don't matter what it's all grabbing me for. Right, we're Where you going? You got none on you? No, man. Okay, y'all let me go. I ain't do no. No. What do I do? Calm down. No. You just ran. Be retained for what? You was you came up to me for no reason first. Well, we would have told you we that. We would have just told you. Why was y'all grabbing me, though? Why y'all coming for us for no reason? Check this out. It's too hot out anyways. Okay. Go look back there. I got him. Okay. Adam, sir. Did they all come in, the, in different cars? Did they all come in different cars? Yeah. Yes. These are the ones that have been, they were driving all crazy records on Detroit the last couple of days since last week. Almost hitting people and just driving because it was this one and it was that one yesterday. Right, contact the school. In a shocking twist, it was revealed that the teens had arrived in stolen cars, adding another layer to the already dangerous situation. Only one of the kids, a 16-year-old, ended up behind bars. He was charged with having a gun and was already wanted in connection to a robbery. The other kids arrested were sent home to wait as a juvenile prosecutor reviewed this for more charges. There's another case in the quiet town of Bunnell, Florida. A shocking event unfolded involving a 19-year-old guy from Georgia named Luke Ingram. It all happened in November 2022. A desperate 911 call brought Flagler County Sheriff's deputies to 34 Claremont Court. There, they found a man covered in blood seeking help. This man was Clint Ingram, Luke's father, and he shared a horrifying story of crime. When the deputies arrived, they found Clint battered and bruised. He told them the awful details of how his own son, Luke, had attacked him and brutally killed his grandfather, Darwin Ingram. Hey! Show us your Walk hands. Walk out to me. Put your hands up. Come out here. Walk out to me. Nice and slow. Right here, right here. Step out to us. Luke, come outside with us. We'll figure everything out. Luke, come on out to me. Come out to us, man. Come talk to us. What's going on today? Slow. Hands up in the air. Come out nice and slow. All right. Turn around for me. Come on, work with us, man. You turn around for me. You turn around, face away from me. You turn around. You turn around and face away from us. Turn around and face away from us. What's going on today? You all right? You medical? We have an ambulance on standby to check you out, but you got to come with us. Oh. Turn around and walk backwards towards us. Can you kneel down where you're at? Can you kneel down where you're at? Kneel down for me. Look, we're only going to ask nicely so many times. Okay, get down on your knees. 
let's talk about this and figure things out. You gotta work with us though, alright? We can get you guys taken care of. Alright, just turn around and go down onto your knees. In the middle of all the chaos, there was Luke Ingram, a 19-year-old college student from Georgia. He was like a dark shadow in the poorly lit house. His dad, Clint, showed clear signs of the violent attack with scary scars, including a bite mark on his inner forearm. But unfortunately, the nightmare wasn't over yet. Up until now, the police were urging him to surrender and come out peacefully, avoiding any more trouble. However, it seemed like he had different plans running through his mind. Okay, turn around and get down onto your knees. Is there a reason you're not doing that? Here, talk to you. What's going on? Turn around for me. You want to walk out here and talk some more? Okay, come on more. Or go down onto your knees, one way or the other. Either works. Do you have any weapons on you or anything? Can you talk to me? Are you hurt at all? Do you need medical attention? Huh. Kneel down for you, buddy. Can you kneel down so we can talk? So we can help you and your f out? Good, turn around. We need to get to your f to help you out. Can you kneel down for me? Can you go down under your knees? Luke, kneel down. Don't get agitated, alright? We're here to help you. Keep your hands up and go down onto your knees. Don't stress, come on. Luke, last chance. Down on your knees, now. Luke, go down onto your knees. Following his bad intentions, there was a face-off, and things got violent as Ingram didn't want to get arrested. The situation got more intense, and the police had to use tasers many times to finally stop him and put handcuffs on him. During the autopsy, the truth unfolded. Ingram was not just a murderer, he was a perpetrator of unspeakable cruelty. The cause of Darwin Ingram's death was revealed to be a result of blunt force trauma and manual strangulation. Disturbingly, Ingram had also sexually battered his dying grandfather. Ingram's father, Clint, revealed a heartbreaking truth. His son battled schizophrenia, a silent struggle that may have contributed to these horrible events. Luke Ingram faced the following charges. First degree murder, sexual battery with a deadly weapon, domestic battery by strangulation, aggravated battery on a law enforcement officer, and resisting an officer both with and without violence. There was another student who put the lives of many students in danger. In a small town nestled away from the hustle and bustle of the city, Forest High School became the stage for a horrific incident that shook the community. It was a day that started like any other, but little did the students know that their lives were in ultimate danger. On April 20th, 2018, a 19-year-old named Sky Bouch, a former student, harbored a dark plan. Armed with a sawed-off shotgun concealed in a guitar case, he entered the school with evil intent. Right here, hold on. Secure. What the hell is that? What happened? What's that? Nine nine six. Nine nine six. Nine nine six. Parent, I think it was a signal thirty five. If you could uh, send me signal fifty five, C hallway. Hey, lock this school down. 
Where's the, who was it? What happened? What happened? 996 Burn, I have a shotgun in the hallway laying on the ground. Did we lock the school down? Lock the school down now. Huh? McManus has the kid. Where? We are on it. They kill two and send their ingredients off. Hey, you stay right there. As the clock ticked 8.29 a.m., Bouch walked quietly to Building 1, wearing a special vest and gloves, carrying something dangerous. His mysterious blue backpack and black guitar case hit a powerful shotgun looked like he really wanted to cause trouble. He shot once into the door of classroom 212, hitting a 17-year-old student in the ankle who had no idea of the pain he was going to endure. The school, once a safe place to learn, now echoed with panic and fear. Down on the ground. What the hell? Put your hands behind your back. Everyone out. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. Who is he? Nine nine six, Burn. I have one in custody. They're saying he's a shooter. Did anyone see him? No, no, he was outside. He came down. Do you go to this school? I used to, sir. What the? All right, go out. Everyone out. Hey, keep them right there. Nine nine six, Bernard. I got one in custody. He's saying he's the shooter. Where is the hallway? D hallway upstairs room. What room are we in? D two two nine. D two two nine. The uh, signal zero is still in the hallway. If someone, hold on, just one. You'll secure the, the, the gun for now. Where's that? It's the in the hallway. Restroom. Secure the, There's another one in the, in the restroom? No, I said the gun's in front of the restroom. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. Okay. What did he say? I wasn't raised by the right people. That's Are you thing. kidding me? There's a lot of violence. No. I don't know. If it meant 5345 area. The front doors of the main building are all locked. I don't know. Why. Are, I don't know. Are, you Are you serious? I don't know why. That's I said, don't say That's another word. I'll say another word. Do you have anything else on you? No, sir. Do you have any other weapons on this campus? No, Do you sir. have any other explosives on this campus? Sir, I put all my stuff on the table behind you, sir. No. Amidst the panicked situation, an administrator confirmed the identity of the shooter. The officer apprehends the detained suspect while seeking information from witnesses. Bouch disclosed the location of additional items. He brought many bullets and a shotgun in the guitar case. Up to this point, they were uncertain about what he was actually planning to do. What is your, what is your name? Sky Boucher. Sky Boucher, and you used to go to school here? SKY Boucher. I used to go here uh, last year, yes, sir. Or the year before. Mike, I'm 97 at Forest High School. I ain't believing this is happening here. Um, there, I mean, it ain't gonna do make anything right this minute. Do you have any idea on you or anything right now? I left it in my car. And your car is where? It's uh, it's in the parking lot. It's got a broken window. And it's what got, color is it? What kind is it's it? A, it's a Nissan Exter. It's got pink duct tape and a broken window. Where in the student parking lot? Nine nine six burn. If someone can go secure this subject's car, it's in the parking lot. It's a. Xterra, I'll get you the information here in just a minute. Thank what you. kind of car is it? Tempor, if you're right? responding to or if someone can start over an Xterra, I'll advise one further. A silver Xterra with duct tape on it in the student parking lot. What is it? That's important. Subject vehicle is a Pink silver duct Xterra tape. with duct tape on it. If they get a good advice, if they're 12 with it. And there's pink duct tape on it, he says. Which side? This side or by the gym or by the auditorium? It's uh we're at the front. Huh? I'm not really sure right now. I think the right side of the school. How did you get up here with a shotgun? You just carried it up here? Yes, 
Yes, sir. Are you kidding me? What stairs did you come Holy in? cow. What door did you come in? Right here. Is there anybody else with you? No, sir. I'm the only one. You're the only one? Yes, sir. 996, kid. How many times did you let's, let's get him. Let's get him up here. What's that? I don't need anybody in here. I really don't. Uh, but he says there's no no more bombs, no more anything. I'd like to check his vehicle, and it's that exterior outside. Are you sure there's no one else with you? Yes, sir. I'm not lying. I got Yes, sir. Uh, uh, well, they're they're all gonna be locked. We're under a code red, but if you would like to, yes, please do. That's where that where the signal forty six is. Yeah. Okay. Who has the gun? Okay. 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 Uh, I think we're good. I, I, but go ahead and do it just to do it. You can go. I, I'm I'm good here. Uh, yeah, open it up right there. There was a lot of people on the internet saying that they were going to attack the school, so I would just, just watch out for other people. Like, you know, we'll so, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Vouch admits to shooting through a door, citing a lack of motive. Officers inquire about his mental health, revealing a history of hospitalization and a sense of disconnect. The dialogue offers insights into the troubled state of the individual, still raising questions about the factors behind the disturbing event. Sir, there's a whole bunch of stuff back here also. Uh, shells and knives and stuff that he apparently you took out of your own pocket? Yes, sir. Do you have a cell phone, Scott? No, it's in my car. What is that number? 352 433 What kind of car do you have? Nissan Xterra. Red? Silver. Silver. Nissan Xterra? Yeah, broke the window. Yo! Get out of here. Come on, get up. Just taking this west stair stairwell. I went to back to the So you've been planning since 2013? Uh, because, I mean, we know about it. Yeah, I know. I know you did. So you've been, this is playing. Uh, the fantasy is calling me down, but when I get depressed, things start coming back. Slow it down, slow it down. As the authorities detained Bouch, the details of his sinister plot started to emerge. Bouch is facing several charges, including burglary of a structure with a firearm, discharge of a firearm during the commission of a felony, possession of a short-barreled shotgun, carrying a concealed firearm, and disruption or interference with an educational institution to facilitate or further terrorism. He has been sentenced to 30 years in prison, coupled with an additional 30 years of probation. Well, the last case we're about to explore has its own limits, something your mind might find challenging to accept. Ready for it? September 9th, 2019. Brendan Wasinski, an 18-year-old parking garage security guard, takes on an unexpected role as a self-proclaimed deputy. Armed with an eBay special Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office badge, handcuffs, and a concealed handgun, he decides to take matters into his own hands. Or so he thought. Now picture this, an unassuming teenager, Brendan Wasinski, patrolling the dark highways in a vehicle that mimics law enforcement. As Wasinski pulls over a speeding car, the situation catches the eye of an actual Albuquerque police officer. The real cop, sensing something strange, decided to investigate. Little did Wasinski know that his illusion was about to crumble. You gotta talk to him for a minute. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? How's it going, man? Who are you working for? Really, thanks for your time. 
I, I know, I'm under equipped. Normally, you do, if you're out here, man, if you're making a traffic stop, you're just, just gonna have to stop, dude. Are you, you say you work for where are the sheriffs? Yes, sir. Do you have an ID with you? Yeah, this, is, this is all I got on I me. Mean, like I said, I'm under, I'm under equipped. I was just heading over there to the courthouse. To the courthouse for what? To get my crap. I know, it makes no sense. I caught him going 120 down I-40. Why do you have lights on this vehicle? Personal. I, I know. Do you have an ID with you at all? No, I keep it on my uniform. What's your name? Uh, Brendan Wozinski. What is it? Brendan Wozinski. Brandon? How do you spell that? B-R-E-N-D-E-N. And your last name? W-Y-S-Y-N-S-K-I. So, Wozinski? Wozinski? How do you spell that? What's your date of birth on? Sorry, my name is. I'm going to be at Brendan Road and 4th. Can you start me a unit and see if there is a BCSO supervisor that can come to my 20? I'm going to be out with one of the units. Hey, just hang tight, man. It's And I'm not here to mess with you, man. It's just the thing is, yeah, he was speeding, dude. You could have called it in. And because if you get into shooting, you're, you're screwed. Right. All right, man. For starters, I know this looks really bad. Right. This looks really bad. Uh, this screams whacker. Right. How long you been on? About three years. Okay. I've been on for like 13 years. All right. So I'm not saying I'm perfect, and I'm not saying that I've never done anything to, you know, against protocol. But you need to be a little bit more careful. All right. Just do me a favor, hang tight for a second, okay? Yes, sir. And we're gonna, and that's it. All right. Once we, once we're done here, just give me a bit. All right. The real officer, in a calm yet firm tone, questions Wasinski about his identity. Dressed in casual jeans with no uniform in sight. Wisinski nervously claims to be a Bernalillo County deputy. The officer, not giving up, checks things and finds out what's really going on here. Hey, Brendan, in the meanwhile, man, until I get somebody out here, man, do me a favor. I'm not going to handcuff you, but I'm going to have you sit in back, in back of my car, all right? All right. Do you have anything on you, man? Any weapons Just or anything? Keys. Okay. Keys um, wallet. That's fine. Just have a seat, all right? All right. Try to get, get everything third up, man. Uh, just have a seat. What's that? Yeah, give me one second. What's up, man? All right. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. I'm okay. not a cop. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to be. Where'd you get honest. that badge from? I bought it offline. Offline. Okay. Do me a favor. Stay, stay in here, okay? I'm left. I was heading northbound on 4th Street. See this unit. 54. Or 54 on the car. I'm like, okay. It's this car that's right here, and the guy was wearing jeans, no gun belts, no nothing, a t-shirt, and I'm like, and just wearing like an Air Force hat. So like, that's strange. So I flip around, and his plates come back to the civilian because he can skip or anything. So I stop, I talk to him for a minute, and he's like, I asked him, who do you work for? He's like, oh, I work for a SO. I'm like, yeah, it's really good. Oh, you've been out three years? Oh, okay. Well, you're kind of ill-equipped too. He's got lights. He's got a package right here too. And, and, I'm, and I'm standing here and I'm like, look at this one, it looks weird. He gives me his name and I double check it with the license. He's got lights on too. He first told me he was born out in 94. And when, when I checked the plates, he was born in 2001. I double checked with MVD, his, his oil lamp comes back to 2001. I had him sat him, sitting back in my car because that's kind of weird to me. And right now when I was getting out, he's like, hey, let me talk to you. I was like, no, I'm not a cop. I just bought this badge on my And he has lights and everything. He fit the Florida car because he said it was going like 120. So he's not a BCSO employee at all? No. But we're going to have BCSO come out anyways just because he's impersonating a BCSO. And he had look like a BCSO badge. Do you have him detained now? Yeah, he's in the back of my car. Okay. Just because, like, I don't know who you are. You don't have anything other than a badge. You don't even have an ID on it. So, that's where we're at right now. Okay. I haven't been to his rights or anything. He just told me that statement. I just figured out. Yeah, it was just really weird. Yeah, definitely. If you want to come with me, we're going to handcuff him. Because right now he's not handcuffed. I just had him set in the car. Okay. Because yeah. at that point, I was still trying to figure it out. Well, it turns out Brendan isn't a real police officer. Here, you can see the officer adeptly manages the situation with Brendan by instructing him to sit in the back of the police car without resorting to handcuffs. The officer proceeds to conduct a standard check and questions Brendan about possible weapons. 
this encounter sheds light on the challenges law enforcement faces when confronted with deceptive behaviors, particularly when dealing with individuals whose intentions may not be immediately clear. Well, after talking it over, the officers then decided to arrest Brendan. For a second, man. Can you face the vehicle? At this point right now, you are being under arrest. You understand? Okay. Turn your hands forward. Turn your hands this way. There you go. Okay. Go ahead and have a seat. And give me a moment, and then we're going to talk a little bit more, okay? Mind if I take a look at your badge? Would you be okay with that? Yeah. You got this online? Mm, it was well, at one point my father's. Okay. What's your. Can I ask your name? Okay. Brandon? Yes, sir. And your last name, Brandon? Wazinski. Wazinski. Oh my god, you, you spelled it wrong. How, how do you spell Wazinski? Did you? W Y S Y N S K O. Okay, never mind, you got it right. Everyone gets it wrong. Okay. Okay. Um, out there. Well, thank you all. Do you mind if I call my wife and tell her I'm not coming home tonight? That's going to be a decision a... these gentlemen make. If you'll hang yeah, give us a little bit, all right, okay. man? All right, Brandon, I'm just going to put on the seatbelt, okay? <laughs> so I need to lean back a little bit. Okay. Can I please call my wife? I'll give you, um, we'll give, when we get to the substation, I'll give you, um, we'll give her a call. Well, I'm going to take off the seatbelt. Now, Hat. feet first. It's just easier that way. First. We'll get your head in a little bit. Yeah, once you want to call your number, step out. We'll get it right now. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'll have somebody pick it up right now. We're going to go down to the left, down the hallway. The time of facing consequences comes as Brendan is told about his upcoming arrest. Handcuffed, but not without protest, he's led to the police car, his dreams of impersonating an officer shattered. We're going to sit in one of these seats over here. Which one? Whatever you want. Which one you want? That one? Let me take off one of the handcuffs. That way you can sit down a little bit more comfortable. Okay, um, before I start everything, I just want to advise you of your Miranda rights, okay? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to you by court. Um, at this time, if you wish to talk to me, you can stop talking to me at any time. Would you like to talk to me about what happened tonight? Yeah, as well. I'll own it. I'll own it. In this pivotal moment, the gravity of the situation intensifies as the officer responsibly recites his Miranda rights, underscoring Brendan's entitlement to remain silent and consult an attorney. Despite the clear advice, Brendan expresses willingness to engage in a conversation about the events that transpired. This exchange reflects the critical legal procedures implemented during arrests, emphasizing the importance of informing individuals of their rights and allowing them the option to exercise those rights throughout the legal process. Well, let's start from the beginning. So what happened tonight? Well, you just won. Can I just tell me from the beginning what happened when before I approached you? Um, I was going to work. We caught this guy flying down the highway at 120. Mm -hmm. where, where do you work at? I work at Albuquerque Courtesy and Parking. Courtesy and Parking? Mm -hmm. Is that for the city or who is that for? It's a security company. Okay. And say that again? The yeah. Albuquerque? Courtesy and Parking. Courtesy and Parking. Okay. Oh, sure. I'm like, Okay. How do you know the, how fast the other car was going? I uh, trailed behind him. Okay. 
and then what happened when you saw him going that fast? Was it on the freeway, on the street? Freeway. Okay, then what happened? Flashed my lights, pulled him over. Okay. And then that's, the lights about, in, that's about the time that you got there. Okay. The lights, were they in your car or personal car or company car? My car. Your personal car? Yes. Okay. Um, who installed the lights in your car? I did. You did? Okay. And um, when I peeked into your car, I also saw that you had some sort of radio. Is that, that yours too? Okay. And then when I made contact with you, I noticed you had a badge. Who? Where'd you get that badge from? Uh, it belongs to my dad. It belongs to your dad? Is he still around or did he pass away? Well, he was killed. Oh, he was killed, okay. When was he killed? About five, six years ago. Okay. When did he leave the department? He didn't leave, he was killed in line of duty. Oh, was he now? Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. And you said he, he used to work for BCSO, Brandon County Sheriff's? Okay. And when I approached you, why did you identify yourself as a as a deputy or part of BCSO? Okay, because I asked you your date of birth and you initially gave right. something in 1994. Right. right. Okay. Um, okay. What did the the, the driver say to you? Uh, he said he was something about his sister in the hospital, mm -hmm. and that he was trying to get there. I told him it's not worth killing someone over. Okay. How old was the guy? How do you look? How old did he look? Uh, based off of his license, he was about 60. And 60? I, didn't, I didn't do the math in my head. Okay. Do you remember his name at all? Okay. All right. Um, do you have any weapons in your vehicle? Um, there is a handgun in a locked case under the seat. Okay. Um. Is there anything outside the vehicle that we should know about? Uh, the glove box, I think I have a set of handcuffs and some extra ammunition for the handgun. Okay. All right. All right. For now, that'll conclude our interview. Um, more likely, uh, somebody else will give you a phone call later on and just try to go a little bit more in depth, okay? Now, the officer initiates a detailed inquiry with Brendan, delving into the sequence of events leading up to the encounter. The conversation takes a poignant turn as Brendan reveals the tragic death of his father, a former officer, emphasizing the emotional weight of the situation. But it was later found out that he fabricated a story about his father's affiliation with the BCSD, producing a narrative that diverged from the truth. The car got towed! Yeah, I know, it's in the impound lot now. Yeah. You guys at least got my stuff out of there, right? What do you mean? My phone and stuff. So, since it's being seized for evidence, everything stays in there. God damn it. Yeah, buddy. Can't be pretending to be a cop. Yeah, I know, I'm stupid. Lesson learned, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Cool. Only I can find this. Cool. There it is. Thank you. I hate seatbelts, man, but we have to do it. What? Someone with a good taste of music. You like King Brown? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, huh? Uh huh. So, as soon as you get to, um, the jail, they allow one phone call and you can do it. Well, the problem is I don't know her number. Aw, oh, man, you don't? No. She's your wife and you don't know her number? Well, it's because she changed it like seven different times. So I just got tired of remembering it. I know, it sounds Uh-huh. And besides, I have a smartphone, remember the number for you. I know, it's, it's really crappy, but she's probably going to be scared You think so? Yeah, because I don't necessarily have a safe job. Gotcha. You know, that happens, and you know, I tell her stories about how a lot of our security guards have gotten shot at. Uh-huh, and, and she gets scared? 
she wants me to not work there. Gotcha. Uh, that's the level of scared she's at, and me not telling her mm -hmm. is gonna peak that. John, watch me for a beauty. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. 1916 one mail to MGC, mileage 5 2. Can I do 533? So, how is this all going to work? What do you mean? So, when I get to the jail, I'm going to get processed and everything, then how do we. And then, honestly, you will probably be released by tomorrow. And then, so they are going to forward this case a detective and he's just gonna come out and talk to you and see what's going on okay and then um after that obviously you're gonna have court and then from there it's just you know you just go through the process it's, it could be long process it could be a short process so then they'll set me up with the hearing date and everything right the right will do his job. exactly okay so what about my car and all the property in it that's so once um, the detective is done processing that, you know, checking out the lights that you put on your car and the plate or whatever, um, you're going to get your stuff back. All right. But they just have to, you know, investigate it first and everything, see what's going on with the case, and then uh, I'm pretty sure it should go back to you. It's just a case now, you know? Yeah. One hell of a thought to know that in about two minutes, I my life can't be doing that, man, and it's awfully dangerous. What if that car, you know, what if that person inside that car had a gun and would have shot you? Yeah. Scary stuff. You really put your life at risk there. Seatbelt has the safety lock on or whatever. Oh, does it? Yeah, these cars are super safe somehow. <laughs> these chargers. I'm trying to get it to release because holy crap, it feels like someone has me in like a restraint. So I heard you're a security officer? Yeah. Oh, nice. Where at? Oh, okay. How long you been there? About a year. Do you like it? No. Why? Shitty management. Ah, man. That's not fun. I cannot stress the management. It's just so crap. And then because it's $10 an hour, you're a level one guard. Most of the properties that we have are in the South Valley. Okay. All of them are really crap properties. I mean, we've had several or so guards get shot at. Wow, that's awful. I think like a couple of weeks ago, I uh -huh. tire on my car, flew out, gave a call to my boss. He wasn't happy about that. If, if you don't get to your clothes, you're going to get written up. And I'm like, what do you want me to do? Walk 11 miles? Yep. On the highway? When I went to go pick up my check, he dug into me about how the only reason you can call out is a person. Oh, wow. So, you know, I hate it. How come you didn't get another job then? Well, I'm trying to find a new job. Yeah, you I, should. I have been trying to find a new job. Uh-huh. So you're 18 and you are already married? Yep. Damn. And I have a kid on the way. No way. Yep, my wife is 36 weeks pregnant. Oh my gosh. Almost due, huh? Boy or girl? Girl. Nice. She's due October 15th. Oh, really? That is coming up. I know, I'm scared. I bet, man. You're gonna be a dad. Gotta be responsible. Okay, say I get released from the MTC tomorrow, how the hell am I gonna get home? Um, that's a good question. I mean, on a fair note, it's not really that far away. From your house? My house is off of 98. So do you have like any uh, other family's numbers that you remember? I mean, I do, but they'll Oh, they don't live here. Can, do they know your wife's number? I don't think so. What? But you could always call for an Uber, man. I'm sorry? You could always call for an Uber. An Uber? Yeah. Well, Just, the detective has my phone. Yeah, but from MDC. Before you get out? Just let them know about your situation, and I'm pretty sure that they will give you, you know, they're, they're going to help you out by letting you borrow their phone and then just calling for an Uber. I mean, your wallet's right here. You have money in there, I Hi. I hope. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't know, since you don't know your wife's number. 
Never mind, the NPC is a lot farther than I thought. It's farther? Yeah. It's just, my house is, you know, it's still relatively close. Like, it's a highway exit down by the yeah. Brendan Wasinski's attempt to pretend to be a cop didn't end well. But why did he do it? In a few clips behind the scenes, footage reveals what happened when he was taken to jail, giving us a peek into his life. A man desperate for work with a pregnant wife and a discontentment with his security guard job. Brendan Wasinski received a one-year probationary sentence in the aftermath of his arrest.